Let's head around the Inside Politics table, ask our great reporters to help get you out ahead of some big political news just around the corner. Julie Pace. So we all know that President Obama is eager to get out on the campaign trail, but Democrats are also itching for another Obama to get out there, and that's, of course, Michelle Obama. She's been traditionally a reluctant campaigner, but she's quite an effective one, particularly with African Americans and young women, another group that hasn't really rallied around Hillary Clinton. Democrats who are organizing the convention in July are eyeing a big, splashy appearance for her in prime time. And you're starting to see some interest in having Michelle Obama hit the fundraising circuit as well, particularly for women who are running for Senate seats. So maybe after this campaign, she can finally go and be done with campaigning like she always <laughs> says she wants to be. She says. Well, or, we'll see if she, or we'll see if she gets the bug. You never That's know. Right. Jonathan? Well, Hillary Clinton has never dealt with a candidate like Donald Trump. Few have. And it's starting to show. I think you're going to see more Democrats calling for her to toughen and sharpen her message against Donald Trump. Uh, there was a, a reaction among some people last week in sort of democratic politics that when she said that Trump wasn't qualified to be president, that was supposed to be tough. And they're, they're saying, well, no, it has to be more than that. You can't just say he's not qualified. You have to go much more aggressive against him. This is unconventional warfare, and you can't line up traditional infantry and artillery fighting what it's a guerrilla war. Uh, and the early polls, emphasizing early polls, that's, that's one of the reasons Democrats this. are a little bit nervous. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Uh, Matt? Uh, two key political metrics to look at. Uh, first is ad spending. The RNC has just announced uh, about $150 million in a digital ad buy, uh, trying to sort of uh, um, go with Hispanics and women, uh, two demographics they need, and Donald Trump in particular. But if the primary taught us anything, is that the political ads didn't really impact it. Uh, otherwise, we'd be talking about Jeb Bush right now, and we're not. Um, the other thing is Hillary Clinton has about 10 times more staffers than Donald Trump does right now. Uh, again, in the primary, that didn't matter for no. Trump. Uh, so I think the key thing to watch going forward is whether, as he shifts from the primary to the general, uh, are these, dem these like sort of key things that we typically look at uh, to figure out who's winning, who's losing, are they going to matter? Can Donald Trump still win with sort of a, uh, uh, a swift boat uh, at, right. going up against Hillary Clinton's aircraft carrier? New rules. New rules. Nia? Uh, ben Carson, who in some ways uh, has been uh, a very unpredictable surrogate for Donald Trump, and some people say very unhelpful as well. He was on the <laughs> VP committee, then he was off, then he was on. Uh, he floated some names for possible uh, VP shortlist that the Donald Trump campaign had to walk back. Now it seems like he has found uh, sort of his natural fit. He's going to be reaching out to evangelical leaders uh, for Donald Trump with the eventual hope uh, that not only they come on board, but a meeting will happen uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, these are people who, by and large, uh, at the grassroots level, voted for Donald Trump, but the leadership uh, was very much behind uh, Ted Cruz, people like Gary Bauer, uh, people like Tony Perkins, people like uh, Vander Plants in Iowa. Uh, I, t I reached out to Carson's people to say, what is his pitch to these leaders? Uh, and they said, listen, the, the simple pitch is it's Trump versus Hillary. Uh, but also, they turned to the Bible and they said, uh, sometimes God uses men who are sinners uh, to do his greatest work. Uh, so that is the kind of pitch <laughs> Uh, Still a message. Which, yeah, yeah. Still a message. Still kind of a mixed message, right? right? So there you so, got it. Inter oh, as yeah, always, Ben yeah. Carson, interesting <laughs> communication strategy. We'll keep yeah. an eye on that one. It's early. I'll close with this. It is early, very early, but leading GOP strategists are encouraged by new research that they say shows the automatic Trump drag they expected, perhaps, in races critical to the fight to maintain the Republican Senate majority does not exist. After reviewing this polling and other research results, the Chamber of Commerce announced this past week it's launching major ad buys in Ohio, New Hampshire, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. Those were announced publicly. CNN is also told ad time was purchased in Arizona and Nevada. Five of those six Senate races feature Republican incumbents viewed as vulnerable. Now, those spending to protect the Republican Senate majority know the Democrats plan to tie the GOP candidates to controversial Trump positions. But they're encouraged by this new research, which shows no automatic, immediate Trump drag. Now, these GOP forces view the period from now until the Republican convention in July is critical to defining these races, and they say they're prepared to spend millions, millions to help.